Summary of the Invalid Heretical Ceremonies of the Excommunicated Heretics, 7 March, 2024 Anno Domini. Official Publication of the Holy Apostolic See of Rome, in Exile, by His Holiness Pope Jacobus I, on the subject of the perverted and heretical quote sacraments unquote, of the ipso facto, and declared by this Holy See, Excommunicated Heretical Assemblies of Heretics, SSPX, SSPXMC, SSPV, and all the assemblies of the set of Acantist heretics, and the novice ordo apostate pro communist neo Protestant sect of Satan, and by the supreme apostolic authority, these false and fabricated heretical ceremonies are thus declared fully condemned and forbidden to be attended in any way whatsoever by those who sincerely strive to be Catholic, which, outside the Roman Catholic Church, which excludes all these above-named heretical assemblies and the apostate sect of the devil, novice ordo, and without the punctual and true practice of the Catholic faith, which is nothing else but Catholic tradition, the eternal salvation of the soul is absolutely impossible. The ipso facto, and declared by this holy see, excommunicated SSPV heretic William Jenkins, here covering up for the apostate pro-communist novice ordo sect of Satan, in his evidently willful deception, as he claims that the reason why this important prayer was suppressed by this novice ordo sect was that it is an quote exorcist prayer unquote, which is a blatant direct lie, as the following excerpt from the original prayer to Saint Michael proves, speaking of the devils and their henchmen the heretics, quote these most crafty enemies have filled and inebriated with gall and bitterness the church, the spouse of the immaculate lamb, and have laid impious hands on her most sacred possessions. In the holy place itself, where has been set up the sea of the most holy Peter and the chair of truth for the light of the world, they have raised the throne of their abominable impiety, with the iniquitous design that when the pastor has been struck, the sheep may be scattered. Unquote. And it concludes with this following excerpt of the petition to Saint Michael, the Archangel, quote, offer our prayers in the sight of the Most High, so that they may quickly conciliate the mercies of the Lord and beating down the dragon, the ancient, serpent, who is the devil and Satan, do thou again make him captive in the abyss, that he may no longer seduce the nations. Amen." Unquote. One of our viewers asked if you could maybe briefly give the history of the St. Michael prayer that we pray at the end of every low mass. Um, mm -hmm. Apparently some have heard that there are multiple versions of this, of this uh, prayer to St. Michael the Archangel, but one of the versions in particular um, Apparently some have said that it was uh, prohibited uh, for lay people to pray this one longer version of this prayer because essentially it could um, in some way equate to that, like a lay person uh, mm. attempting to perform an exorcism. Have you ever heard that, Father? Could you? I have, uh, yeah. Really? I've heard there, there are four different versions of the prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. The lengthiest and the, the oldest, the, the original, uh, came from the pen of Pope Leo the Thirteenth. <clears throat> After elocution, he heard. Um, I understand it was after mass, uh, and he heard an exchange between our Lord and the devil. <clears throat> he said, "I will destroy your church," and our Lord said, "Well, you have a hundred years." So we see the damage that has been done in the meantime, right? And the church is now suffering terribly from that affliction. Um, but the um, the original prayer of Saint, uh, to St. Michael the Archangel was written by Pope Leo XIII after that. And it was a prayer basically of exorcism. There you see there's a difference between the lengthy prayer of Pope Leo XIII and the shortened prayer. <clears throat> because in the prayer of uh, Pope Leo XIII, there's more of a direct attempt to command the devil. There's an appeal to God through St. Michael the Archangel. But if you read the lengthy prayer, it is thought that, interpreted by some, that it is more of a command from the one doing the praying to tell the devil, command the devil to leave. Um, now, again, an ordained exodus, exorcist would have the right to they pray that prayer. Pope Leo XIII would have certainly the right to compose that prayer and to give it to others to say, to pray. But one thing that puzzles me a bit 
is that when Pope Leo XIII actually composed that prayer, and it was published, I don't know that there was a prohibition against lay people saying it. And so if, if there was really, and contained in the prayer, a, an attempt of a, a layman, a non-exorcist, to actually challenge the devil, you'd think that Pope Leo XIII would have put some kind of caveat in there. I don't know that he really did. I never saw it anyway. But, but anyway, uh, there are exorcists who warn people, don't pray that long prayer because um, it, it's too presumptuous on your part, as so you're challenging the devil. But the shorter prayer that we're all very familiar with actually asks God, cast into hell Satan, or ask St. Michael the Archangel to do the casting. Okay? So it's not me telling Satan, you go back to hell, you know, I'm commanding you. It is asking St. Michael to give the command, using, of course, the power of God. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this is a prayer of exorcism, but it's not... Uh, the individual prayer who's presuming to have that power. I mean, the devil knows who has power over him. Um, when someone does not have power, when he, he spiritually senses that someone does not have power over him, he's more inclined to flaunt himself and, and his power over them. But when he's in the presence of an exorcist who actually he knows has power over him, then like a coward, he just does everything he can. Like a cockroach when you turn the light on. He runs for cover from those he knows. He knows have power over him. Mm. Uh, because he doesn't want them to uh, confront him and expel him. Yeah. Okay. What a blatant, direct lie. This is so bad. That's what he just said, this heretic. And we are posting this at the beginning of our publication today, which is on different subject, but it touches on that principle as it is. Because these people are actually heretics. Not only that, that he's misleading, but he's willfully lying. That's, that's, that's a, he knows very well what it says. This prayer was, uh, the history is a little bit more complete than, than so the other 13 finished this morning prayer, the morning mass. Uh, that was 1888 Anno Domini. And then he collapsed. And they thought that they, he died. And so that's a sign that there was a message from heaven, as it is. He collapsed. He, so when he came back to himself, they, questioned, they, they asked him what, what happened. And he said uh, that he heard two voices behind the tabernacle, one whom he distinctly was uh, given by divine grace to recognize as our Lord, and the other was the voice of, that, of the devil. And the devil boasted that uh, he, he would destroy the church if he was given 75 to 100 years. So the, seven, the 100 years, what he said, this heretic Jenkins, is not entirely correct because there are, there are accounts that, that there were 75 years. So when you add 75 years to... Um, 1888, it gives you 1963 Anno Domini, which was that Second Vatican gathering of heretics, which was never the Council of the Church, because they were already heretics, because they accepted their own colleague changing the sacrament of holy orders and posting the, uh, in, in, imposing on the Church the uh, heretical uh, Pontifical Romano with all the change rites and so forth, among which the Episcopal Consecration was the most important one, because it cuts off the uh, uh, the apostolic succession as it is. So then, uh, the hundred years, that's more tricky, but yes, it is, it is, uh, again, self-evident, because the hundred years of uh, what uh, he, uh, what the devil boasted, what he was given, is 1988. Well, there was not seemingly that there was already no sort of sect, so that's the, the outside. So the church was uh, presenting itself, was in the catacombs as it is, but then those who retain seemingly the Catholic faith, which is nothing else but Catholic tradition, where, for example, the uh, society passed the tent in the sense of their ceremonies as it is. 
So it leads to our present, our publication today, but that was the 1988 so-called Episcopal consecration in Econ, Switzerland, but which was invalid because we will speak about it in our presentation, so it leads to it. Uh, why it was the that had, God had to use this in order to protect his promise that the gates of Shinnok be well against the church, but in only in a miraculous way as it is to preserve that imprint of episcopacy on at least one soul of those four people who are seemingly consecrated to episcopate. And that was Bernard Pillay. No other was more eligible or and God didn't need to give them more as it is uh, because they were heretics and that right itself was invalid because the imposition of hands is done in turn that was Bishop de Castromare and uh, and uh, Archbishop Lefebvre and we have shown this in uh, our previous uh, publication so so that's that can be seen that's from 1988 that's uh, Sierra de Malaray Williamson, the Galaretta, and Bernard Filet, as in a call in Switzerland. This is the 1988, uh, 100 years after that vision of uh, the location of uh, uh, the order 13. So, this is what the devil was boasting about. This is major deception of, of Satan. Imposition of hands done in turn, which is not according to the Pontifical Romanum. In fact, they taking God into question, uh, rather de denying that the sacrament takes place because one bishop suffices for validity. But that's what Roncal introduced in 1962 in the Pontifical Romanum. It's completely invalid because that's the effect of intention, and therefore there's no uh, validity of that. That's completely invalid. That they are not bishops because of that second imposition, because they're doing it in turn. It has to be done together, they have to do it together. That was Bernard Filet. Uh, but God used this ceremony to continue the church, because otherwise that would, that would be a heresy itself. But only, they, they cannot use that episcopal power themselves, because they are heretics, and so there's no, no possibility of doing anything. That's artificial effect. Again, in front of a heretical crucifix, our Lord is facing upward, which is contrary to the Gospel of St. John, chapter 19, verse 30. On bowing his head, he gave up the ghost. So this is that he didn't take care of Archbishop Lefebvre. That's in a cone again. That's a large crucifix that our Lord was not able to carry, and the, the, the feet evidently are nailed separately, which is not according to tradition. So this is something that cannot be permitted by a true bishop. So... That's the canon law reflecting to it, 1279. And uh, so th these, these are the enemies of the church who think that they can just invent things at random and, and continue their evils as it is instead of just uh, doing what the church does. So we would like to point out that uh, Today, the, we will address this uh, like a summary of what, why these heretics are way outside the church and why is it uh, impossible or, or forbidden by the church for anybody who wants to save his soul to attend to their assemblies and so forth. And that's just so, uh, but in regards to their so-called sacraments. Why is it so? Because it is important that people know why these sacraments are invalid in regards to these heretics. This is the publication uh, summary of the invalid heretic ceremonies of the excommunicated heretics. Uh, and we go to the first one, that's holy orders. And uh, so then we go to the SSPX. Now priesthood and episcopate. Why is it so? Because uh, they're using the 1962 Missal Romanum, and they not only that, but they perverted the uh, the right of Episcopal consecration ordination, 
pre-episcopal consecration and ordination to priesthood. And so, therefore, it has serious defect of intention. And uh, they followed all these changes done by the Novus Ordo sect, which therefore institute uh, defect of intention. And it's not what the church does in administration of the sacraments. They're following the new perverted uh, invalid rites, and uh, therefore they are that's invalid. So they don't have valid priests and bishops. For that matter, we have, we have shown what Archbishop Lefebvre did. Because the imposition of hands in Episcopal consecration has to be done by three bishops. They are three, they are only two at that time, and they have to be done uh, together. And we have demonstrated this in uh, uh, the difference between the, uh, the Pontificar Romanum, as it is, and the one that uh, they invented, Roncalli invented, for precisely for that purpose, to destroy the right of Episcopal consecration, as it is. So that's invalid, and uh, moreover, the Mass itself, the Missal, Missal Romanum, they're using the 1962 version of Roncalli, which he had, that's already invalid as it is. It has, it contains a uh, uh, substantial change in the canon of the Mass, because Roncalli added uh, the name of St. Joseph, which was never there, so uh, that is defect of intention again, and therefore they're not ordaining people to say the Mass, as the Catholic Church says the Mass, but because that's that's a unchangeable part of that canon of the Mass, it's unchangeable part of the of the Mass itself, uh, but uh, they uh, are using new and, and unapproved, uh, and therefore null and invalid, uh, Right of Mass, and therefore that we will speak about it on, when we get to the page uh, uh, of, uh, um, of the Sacrament of um, Holy Ghost. But um, that constitutes defect of intention, therefore that's, that's not valid priesthood, because they're not ordaining people into priesthood to say the Catholic Mass. The Holy, the, the offer to God, the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, which is Tridentine Mass, according to the rubrics, as they were prior to these changes, and these enemies of the church try to blame uh, the changes uh, in the Holy Week on past the 12, but it's con inconceivable that he was involved in it because that's uh, contrary to tradition. So, and he was very ill back then. So they pushed these enemies have pushed this through, and then so uh, they they try to blame it on him. Evidently, because there's no conclusion, he was. Uh, very knowledgeable person, um, doctor in theology and canon law and so forth. So he was and spoke fluently of uh, uh, at least eight languages and so forth. So he was not, he was not he would not be deceived or anything. But uh, they were already inside these enemies, these communist agents. They were already inside and tried to uh, fabricate as many falsehoods as possible to destroy the church from within. So then. We go to this so-called resistance. That's the same same exact situation as SPX uh, heretics now priesthood and episcopate. Same exact thing because they emanate from uh, Richard Williamson, and uh, mm, with the exception of today, this heretic Joseph Pfeiffer. But that's, that was already invalid because uh, it's also the perverted sanctuary that that gives the uh, the validity or invalidity, because if there is no cross on front face of the altar, which that cross must be there in order to signify what that priest or bishop is supposed to affect in that sacrament. So it has to be visible. Otherwise, the, the, the holy sacrifice of the Mass is not offered to God, because then they they mocking him. And when uh, so Pfeiffer, when he uh, was supposedly consecrated bishop. Uh, he was. It was done in this small chapel and in, in that place he has in Kentucky, and uh, there's no cross in front of the altar, and he has perverted crucifix, article crucifix, and somebody who was sort of a countess heretic. Uh, we have never heard of this person before, so we don't even know who that is, and uh, plus, so there's no episcopal. Uh, 
continue there's no apostolic succession in that uh, because if it's emanating from uh, artificial God that's, that's a serious problem and uh, we have addressed this problem before uh, what he was causing and all, all that so having phone on, on the front face of uh, on the on the altar and uh, when he attempted to consecrate uh, uh, Moises Carmona and, and Zamora and Gerardo Lier, all heretics. So there's no such no such uh, thing as uh, as validity to be claimed. It's, it's just impossible. So and and then Williamson was attempting to again with these horrible defects present. He himself is a horrible heretic and not bishop to begin with, based on the 1988. Uh, invalid ceremony. So that goes back to Archbishop Lefebvre. So there's no 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 priesthood because they cannot ordain because they are not bishops and there's no no episcopate. So then we go to uh, heretics as this Jenkins uh, of this progeny illegitimate order, so-called order, as as I said, the fifth. Again, no priesthood and episcopate. That's a bit different. Uh, that uh, comes through a uh, valid bishop, uh, Alfredo Gonzalez Mendez, who himself betrayed the church and, and was evidently consecrated in the true right. Uh, but then he was uh, active for 10 years uh, as a, as a, uh, in, in uh, Puerto Rico, in Arecibo. And uh, again, he even dared to so-called consecrate in that new and invalid, right? Because they don't permit something else, his successor. Uh, uh, and so then he was approached by these uh, heretics, uh, Scali and Jenkins and the rest of them. But then there's, we have demonstrated this in our publication, the subject of their invalid uh, episcopate and, uh, and priesthood as it is because priesthood because what Archbishop Lefebvre was doing and his defects in in the uh, in Econ that's why we shown that crucifix in that uh, that large crucifix and him walking in front of it outside uh, because then if they those these people have tolerated this then they are all heretics and they were part they one way or another they studied for the Novi sort of sect. So including Kelly, including Jenkins. Jenkins even claims to have a doc, uh, the degree in the, uh, theology from the sect. Which is that's, that's, that's something that he should discard completely because it's a non Catholic sect. And he had it on his website. So no wonder he's capable of covering up for the sect as it is. Because uh, that's just simply impossible to, to do this. Now, the, the essential part of that prayer, since we sidetracking all of it, is these most crafty enemies have filled and abraded with gal, but gal of bitterness the church, the spouse of the Mark Old Lamb, and have laid in pious hands on most sacred possessions in the holy place itself, where has been set up the seat of, of, of the most holy Peter and show of truth for the light of the world. They have raised the throne of their abominable abominable impiety with iniquitous design when a pastor has been struck the sheep may be scattered that's why they don't want to hear it they don't want people to hear it that's why it was suppressed and it was suppressed by the sect in order to protect themselves from being recognized as servants of satan that's the devil and that's why they don't want people to pray it and that's why they have come up with this deception which this uh, heretic Jenkins is, is uh, disseminating so that people wouldn't understand that he has those who sit in the, in the Vatican and present themselves as the Catholic Church is in fact uh, apostate sect of, of communist agents, servants of Satan. And for the purpose of destroying everything that is Catholic and to rob the Church of her rightful property so that the Church is in the catacombs as we are today this holy apostolic see and uh, in our our churches and, and priories and all this worldwide which rightfully belong to us sit non-catholic site communist agents and disseminating these horrifying abominations 
that's the abomination of desolation that's taking place and this horrible Jenkins is a part of it because he's this uh, deceiving people and covering up for the sect that was blatant lie what he said in regards to that that's an excuse that that destroys completely the truth as it is so now they don't have a priesthood and they don't have a episcopate and that moreover to go back moreover uh, what they did uh, when Mendes was uh, doing it uh, him obviously not taking care what he would do uh, when Kelly was there they allow Jenkins and the other person what's his name is Rajka to impose hands as so-called assistant priest uh, there's only one imposition of hands that, that constitutes the, uh, the uh, matter of the sacrament and that was uh, that's, that has to be done by a bishop so if there's only one bishop there's no other imposition of hands priests are not permitted that's protected by Council of Trent on the sacrament of uh, holy orders uh, section 23 and an anathema in the, in the canon so then we come to um, the Servicantis heretics that's uh, Donald J. Simborn, McGuire, that was formerly uh, Daniel Dolan Pivarunas, uh, CMRI, and so forth. It emanates from uh, uh, Archbishop Go, and uh, that's a serious, serious problem because he. We have illustrated on the main recording on the on the subject of the Servicantis heresy, and so we don't like to enlarge on that uh, here because we have so many things to go through. It's just a summary. So no, they don't have valid uh, episcopal uh, consecrations and. Moreover, the defects in their sanctuaries and priestly ordinations, but because the main sign that you can see in that sub on that is that they do not uh, take care of the sanctuary, and like Pivarunas, he has uh, in that place that he's got in the United States in Omaha, Nebraska, which he calls theirs to call seminary, which is not. Uh, he has a uh, uh, representation of a lamb which is idolatry in fact and he had perverted crucifix there our Lord being uh, alive and away from the cross in front of it so he had that kind of thing we have demonstrated this in the main uh, re recording so we don't need to we're just doing the summary here we don't need to present the, the visual uh, 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 reference to it but it, it, it was it was so bad that the person who dares to claim to be a bishop is allowing these kind of things and uh, also that he was so-called consecrated by Moises Carmona who himself was so-called consecrated by Archbishop Go, who had a phone on the altar which we have demonstrated in countless publications that that's a defect of intention that the bishop cannot allow possibly to have an altar on which he dares to say the mass and have a phone on it that doesn't belong there. This is, this is a mockery of God. He was mocking God. And then he went to non-Catholic sects and the claims to have the, uh, the to, to consecrate bishops and uh, ordain the priesthood, which is completely invalid because on that defect of intention, they will not be saying with the knowledge, fullness of knowledge, that they will not be saying the Catholic Mass. And they will have the training as it is. He himself was heretic because he was present at the Second Vatican gathering, gathering of Heretics, which was never valid council of the church. And then also he was, uh, this Archbishop Go, he was doing all kinds of things. So how can he claim to be a bishop in position of faculties and then didn't recognize that even if he attempts to do something like this for non-Catholic sect, and that was Palmar de Troya, El Palmar de Troya in Spain, and also the old Catholic sect in France. Uh, that he wouldn't know that that's completely invalid because that, that, that's a defect of intention. Even if he did it correctly, and there were serious problems with that uh, reportedly, but uh, uh, even if he did it correctly according to the, to the Pontificar Romanum, valid Pontificar Romanum, still that would be uh, invalid because they themselves will not use that. It's not only the sacrament, it's what they will use. So that's defect of intentions on his part. He attempted to consecrate bishops or ordain to priests, the priesthood, people who will not practice the Catholic faith and would not offer the holy sacrifice of the Mass. 
and so that's and plus that the, the whole preposterous uh, conclusions on his on his part, and uh, that the self-evident situation that uh, his whole family was murdered by the communists in Vietnam, where he was from, and so we don't even know if that was him. There's no no no. We don't know if there was any testimony of somebody who survived that 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 whether that was that might have been a communist imposter, communist agent posing as 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 the brother of, of the uh, late president of Vietnam, uh, Ngo, uh, that's the last name. And, uh, uh, so we we don't know. So then there would be no episcopal power in him at from the beginning. But that's just the, the suspicion. So but it, it's it's based on th that he didn't fear God's punishment, what he did, that he went to two non-Catholic sects and attempted to consecrate and ordain to priesthood and consecrate them uh, in a Catholic rite with full, uh, fullness of knowledge that they will not be using that, that power to continue the Catholic faith and con to store for the Mass and to uh, administer the sacraments as it is. Because they, they don't belong to the Church. Plus, that he would know that it is not possible to change the sacrament warriors and to institute a new pontifical hermanum with defective heretical rights as Roncalli did. So how come he was so in possession of facult his faculties and didn't understand that, that you cannot be changing it that's protected by Council of Trent under the pain of anathema that means cursed, excommunicated the, the sacred rights of sacraments and uh, so there's, there's no possibility of inventing anything else, which Roncalli did, and made it invalid in that Pontificale Romano. So now they don't have uh, valid uh, ordinations and episcopal consecrations, this, these sort of a contest. And that's why they're allowing these defects, like Sambor in this new place uh, in uh, Pennsylvania, uh, they don't even have a cross. There's nothing, it just looks like a piece of piece of furniture, that, that so-called altar. And, and evidently, visually, just observing from distance, when they show their, their uh, so-called chapel, the crucifix itself looks suspicious as it is. That's not really the correct crucifix. And so there's yeah, this, this, this just simply no way to recognize them as, as in position of these, uh, of not only these offices, but the dignity itself. Of, of bishop and, and priest. That just doesn't exist. Based on these horrible defects that are substantial. And that's our judgment as it is. So this, this is not open to discussion. Any other heretics, no need to add anything so self evident because that's just, we added that in there. Uh, anybody who was ever connected with SSPX that comes from Archbishop of Fabry was already heretic. Heretics cannot come for cuts. Uh, uh, cannot come for grace in the sacraments that goes all the way back to St. Thomas Aquinas that the doctrine itself, the church obviously understands that uh, smotology and so forth, we have shown this many times in our publications uh, and by the very fact that the, that the person communicates in the sacraments with a heretic he sins and cannot approach the sacrament uh, does not, does, does approach the sacrament insincerely says St. Thomas and today's his piece, so we are very glad and very pleased that we could uh, produce this, uh, our official document uh, on the subject. And so now we, there's no such thing as recognition. So the situation is really bad, as it is. That's truly the abomination of, of, of uh, desolation, as it is. So then we go to non-Catholic non sect, apostate sect, and now also the pro sect of Satan. And we have written this, stay away from these servants of the devil. These are today all laymen, imposters, and non-Catholic false religion, invalid and null priesthood and episcopate, fabricated heretical and false, quote, sacraments, unquote, do not approach for anything, including any and all communications with this apostate pro-communist sect of the devil. Just simply stay away from them because they are just, it's just so such a perversion that it's, it's, Surely evident that these people do not fear God's punishment. So when then we go to this, that's the sacrament of Holy Eucharist. Again, uh, we go to SSPX. SSPX heretics, now they don't have valid mass. 
defect of intention, invalid priesthood, perverted sanctuaries, quote unquote, do not have valid priesthood and episcopate. We have spoken about this. So we go to this, uh, the so called resistance, again, heretics. Now, the same defect as SSPX. We will address the actual sacrament itself in regards to heretics. No, this sacrament results from grace. And uh, there is, what, is, what is taking place is a miracle of transubstantiation. And God will not grant that transubstantiation of that host and the wine and the chalice into the body and blood of our Lord upon the recitement, reciting the formula that is, at that moment, uh, uh, set by, by, the, by the true priest or bishop, obviously. And they don't have that because they're negating it, not only because what their so-called chapels and churches look like and places where they say it, and they say it in places that nobody would believe that it's even possible, like in, on a kitchen sink, we have seen that. Uh, the footage, they actually put it on the internet. Uh, Pfeiffer was doing it when it was still, that, uh, when Hugo was still with him. Uh, yeah, they were doing all kinds of evils like this in uh, private houses and uh, presenting themselves as if this was something that is allowed or, or saying it in front of windows so that the reflection of the, of the person is in the window itself, so he's saying it to himself, he's visible there to himself, which is horrifying, that's terrifying, so they don't even have, they care what they do in front of God, they don't fear God's punishment, and yes, that's, that's what our Lord calls the hirelings, so no need to add anything, that's just, it's always the, the, the place where they say it, how, what, what the crucifix looks like, what the, the altar looks like, if there's no cross, stay away, because that cross is essential, that has to be there, that signifies the intention of that, of that minister of the sacrament, that means the priest or a bishop, to offer sacrifice to God, which is, the holy sacrifice of the Mass is, reenactment of the sacrifice of the cross, cross of Calvary. Whomsoever does not present the cross on the front face of the altar, is therefore committing more the sin of heresy, because St. Paul says, show the death of the Lord until he comes, that's in the in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 27, something, and that's then we we'll have to look it up, but it's, uh, I think it's chapter 11. But let the man prove himself, and so let, let him uh, eat the bread and drink the chalice, because he shows the death of the Lord until, the, until he come, and so forth. Uh, which means that's actually then he shows St. Paul shows that it's truly really real presence, that it truly really is miracle, and a twofold miracle, because not only the miracle of transportation takes place, but the, the species uh, retain the appearance of what it was before, that, that substance was changed completely, and it's, it is changed completely. But God, by, by miracle, retains the appearance of the host and the wine in the shell. So it would be possible to consume it. But in a substance, it, it is true body and blood of our Lord. And uh, so that's that in itself, they cannot obtain it. Because as heretics and with invalid priesthood, they just mocking God. And with these defects, God testified to it, testifies to it because they don't take care what they should have. And even if they attempted to fix it, it's still too late because it's visible. They are heretics. And, moreover, these defects that they demonstrate uh, 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 is self-evident that, that they don't truly really possess the guidance and protection of the Holy Ghost. And the devil doesn't want his servants to do it correctly. Because then it will be evident that the rest do not have correctly the, uh, what, what they present as, as the Mass and so forth. No, it is invalid. Then we go to SSP, SSPV heretics. Again, same same thing, exact same defects as, as SPX, idolatry in their, in, their, in their chapels. Jenkins has not only a uh, representation of a lamb, which is in itself a representation of an animal, and it was forbidden to uh, represent our Lord as such a long time ago, and back then they had the only represent, they would never dare to put it on the front face of the altar to begin with, 
that was that was that was nobody would dare to do that, but what they do today. But back then they had a representation, and it was in a in a in a figurative sense, uh, a reflection on the uh, on the passage in the Holy Gospel when Saint John the Baptist points to the Lamb of God and says, "Behold the Lamb of God," and instead of our Lord walking through uh, in that place, uh, they were showing in in a figurative sense, in a mystical sense, the the Lamb itself in that in that in those representations, and that's the the Council of Trullo from 696 on a Domini condemned that, and uh, even though that was iconoclast council, it was later approved by Hadrian the first, and it's in the Acts of the Second Council of Nicaea, 787 Anno Domini. So that it was validly promulgated by the church. It's binding in conscience. Whomsoever dares to represent, to show representation of a lamb in their in their sanctuaries, you you have to walk out because that's forbidden by the church to be like this. And that far back, for that purpose, so that there will be no idolatry present are misused by the devil for idolatry, which they do, these servants of the devil. And Jenkins has that in his place in Ohio, uh, in Cincinnati, Ohio, suburb. Uh, he has that. Not only on the altar he has a representation of, a, of the lamb, but he has a representation of a dove, which is a bird that was just the attribute of, of Holy Ghost, which the Holy Ghost appeared in that attribute to the apostles. But that's not that you would be permitted to represent it in a, in a place where the adoration of God takes place because then when they genuflect and lift the host and found that now he switched the crucifix uh, but it, or for time being and then he went back to the previous one a defective one heretical one so uh, uh, it still uh, doesn't make any difference because there's idolatry truly idolatry present in those in those places so these are truly horrifying servants of Satan uh, evidently, they do not use the 1962 Missal Romano, but that doesn't change anything. They still heretics, and and with these defects, that's, and plus, they pronouncing the the Latin in with Italian pronunciation, which is another defect. It was very hard for us to find out about this, because it goes very far back, all the, all the way back to the beginning of that sect, 1960s. So it was they were changing these things. Those were or hardened. Communist criminals, people who enter the church for purpose of destroying it. Stalinists, Choi fanatics who 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 Choi wanted to destroy the church, so they caused this much this much uh, uh, evil as it is. So we go to the city of Countess heretics. Uh, again, that same form, McGuire, before us, and so forth. Now invalid priesthood and episcopate, desecrate for various sanctuaries. We have spoken about this. Serious defects of intention and so forth that invalidates the whole thing. So there's no mass. They don't have the right mass. Any other heretics? Again, heretics cannot come for grace in the sacraments. And moreover, we have done extensive pilgrimage all over Europe, uh, visited many churches, and they, uh, we have not so, seen so much, and over in the United States and Central America and so forth. Uh, in Mexico, and uh, we have not seen so much as one church in good, one chapel, one oratory in good standing, not one, uh, which is terrifying. But yes, that's the truth, and we have documented in, in main publication on the subject. Uh, but that was just whatever we could fit in there, so that it would be uh, extensive, but still not overwhelming, and so forth. There's one place in. Of the uh, of the SSPX heretics in uh, the United States in Wisconsin, uh, Pesco Macmanago, when they had a pelican with three little ones under under her wings, on the front face of the altar. We are not joking about this. This is this is so serious. We have documented this in that publication. But that's not sacrifice to God. That's showing the, a bird with three little ones on the front face of the altar where they're supposed to offer sacrifice to God, the reenactment of the sacrifice of the cross of Calvary of our Lord. And uh, uh, so that's, 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 they're mocking God. So that's invalidates. Moreover, that invalidates their priesthood because those people who, uh, no matter who from these four uh, pretenders to the Episcopate uh, are 
uh, are showing up for their so-called ordinations, they're using the wrong missal and then they're using the uh, they they doing it in such places. As long as they're permitting it in one place, it it negates the whole intention as it is, because they're doing it with that knowledge that they have such a defective place filled with idolatry in their order, so-called order. And that's, that's just inadmissible, that's, that, that's a serious defect of intention. So we go into the novice of the sect, that's absolutely invalid. They use Protestant, heretical, and idolatrous renouncement of the Last Supper. And uh, so there's just n no way that that's, that's completely invalid. They don't have, that's not a mass. Some of these heretics, if not all, they call it they, they call it mass, but that's not mass. And whomsoever dares to call it mass, this is committing more of heresy. Because that's, that's not a mass. As the, the, the Catholic Church always understood it. Because Catholic mass is a holy sacrifice of the mass, according to the proper rubrics, and it's a reenactment of the sacrifice of the cross of Calvary. And bloody reenactment. That's what, the, what only can be called mass. Anything else is heretical, idolatrous, that's a it's a ceremony that Luther in, in, imposed on his followers and uh, it's joy uh, showing them the Last Supper. Our Lord instituted the Mass at the Last Supper, but that's not the Last Supper, we're not going to have the Last Supper. There was nothing accomplished at the Last Supper in regards to redemption. Redemption was accomplished by the death of our Lord on the cross. That's why St. Paul says in 1 Corinthians, as we have quoted, uh, Chapter 11, he says, show the death of the Lord until he come. And that's the guiding principle. And the Council of Trent protected this doctrine in the session dealing with the, with the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist. I've forgotten which one it was, 22nd session, some, something like that. But we have shown this many times before. And it says, and if anyone said it, and so forth, and if, if it's not, and then the transubstantiation and all this, we have shown this in our previous publications. We don't need to, this is just a summary here to show that, that these people truly have invalid ceremonies in the sacrament. So, the, not, not a bene. Uh, uh, this horrible apostate sect of the devil is not Catholic. Nothing more needs to be said. And these are enemies of the Catholic Church professing false heretical religion and fabricated invalid called sacraments, unquote, which are null, with the exception of uh, perhaps baptism, but it's still done outside the church. We will deal with that and uh, we have to uh, go further. Sacrament of penance. Again, null heretics cannot absolve. SSPX. Null heretics cannot absolve from sins. They don't have valid priesthood. SSPX. This called so-called resist, resistance. Again, heretics cannot absolve. God will not provide the necessary grace. There is no solution from sins in their so-called uh, quote, quote, quote unquote uh, confessionals. Then this society in Pius V, the legitimate order, now the same as the rest. Servacantis heretics, Sanborn, Maguire, Pivernos, now sacrament is invalid. There's no absolution with them. Same as the rest. Stay away as far as possible. Any other heretics? Null. Sacrament of penance is null. No absolution from sins. And then we go to this. The apostate proclaim is no other sect of Satan. Stay away from these servants of Satan. Nothing they do is valid and meritorious in front of God. Except baptism if it is done correctly in Catholic rites. Still outside the Catholic Church and thus without the divine grace. The fullness of grace of that sacrament is not granted by God. And then this, this is the Nota Bene. Heretics cannot absolve from sins as the absolution results from the divine grace of God and he will not supply to those who are his enemies and also who lack the valid priesthood, etc. and faculty. The only exception could be the divine miracle of perfect contrition, but it must be accompanied with the firm desire of the sacrament of the sacrament of penance on part of the penitent and no heretics will obtain it. So if people are already heretics, God will not grant it because they have to be absolved of their heresy. So there's no such thing as perfect contrition. Impossible. Sacrament of Holy Matrimony. We have spoken about this extensively in our publication 
invalid and null marriages of all assemblies of heretics and the Novus Ordo sect from 19 February 2024 Anno Domini. So SSPX heretics, null heretics do not have the uh, authority to administer a valid sacrament of holy matrimony. This question is resolved in canon law. 1917 code and by the recent official publications of the Holy Apostolic See, and we have quoted it. SSPX resistance, again, uh, same as above, null and valid. SPV, the Society of the Fifth, heretics, same as above, null and invalid. Set of accounts as heretics, Sanborn, Maguire, Pivarunas, and so forth, same as above, null and invalid. And then we have any other heretics, provided they were validly baptized, because that's the uh, principle in there, in the canon law, null and invalid. And plus, there is no valid sacrament and no divine grace supplied by God, because that's outside the church. So, as part of the validity of the, of the sacrament of holy matrimony, is concerned if uh, one of these, like, Protestant sects and so forth, we do not wish to address this so so deeply, so... so uh, Precisely, but uh, yes, that's that's but that's this described in the canon law as different type of it's just a contract, marriage contract, but it's outside the church, so there's no uh, grace, and they don't receive the nuptial blessing, which is the greatest protection of the of the of the holy matrimony as it is. So obviously, because they are outside the church, heretics do not obtain it from God. Again, there's no grace of that sacrament. And then we go to the no, the apostate pro-communist novice of the sect of Satan. Run away from this horrible apostate sect of Satan. That's all we can say. Do not approach them for anything. Sacrament of extreme unction. Uh, SSPX heretics. Now, do not have true holy oils. Again, that results is the chain reaction. They don't have, they, they do not have the, um, the valid episcopate, so they cannot, they don't even do it correctly because they're using the 1962 Pontifical Romanum, and so that, that's perverted in there, uh, of the rise itself. And plus, their sanctuaries are perverted, plus, their their intention is is, is defective. So, that's just it, it's 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 a, it's, a, it's a farce, it's truly a deception of the devil. These are his servants, and we go to. Uh, the, the so-called resistance, again, do not have true holy oils. As a, a society in the fifth, heretics, no, do not have true oil oils. They allow uh, Novus Ordo Sectarian, who was validly consecrated by, but lost as a heretic and traitor to the church, lost his uh, office of the bishop. And moreover, they, he, so that means that there's no grace of that sacrament given. And so, and we've seen, we have already testified to that uh, in our publication on the, on there on these heretics that they were still involved because they allowed the, at the essential moment of the conferring of that right of episcopal consecration on Kelly, Clarence Kelly, uh, and he was heretic already. They this Mendez, uh, Bishop Mendez, uh, excommunicated heretic uh, and a member of apostate sect. Uh, he permitted to people who were not valid bishops, who were just presenting themselves as priests, and they don't even possess that to begin with, Jenkins and Marchka, uh, to impose hands on top of a head of, of Kali, together with this Mendes. And a true bishop will never permit something like this, because he would know that Council of Trent forbade that it's very, that's under the pain of anatomy again. Uh, uh, um, that's in... Uh, Session, session 23 uh, on holy orders. I mean, I've forgotten if it was Canon 7 or something, something in that regard. Uh, but we have we have shown this many times as a screenshot. Set of accounts heretics. Again, all assemblies, no valid episcopate, and thus no true holy oils. Stay away. Any other heretics, no need to address this point. Again, we already addressed the Sacrament of Holy Orders. The apostate pro-communist uh, 
neo-Protestant novels are the sect of the devil. Run away as far as, as and as fast as possible. The level of perversion is so bad that there is no need to add anything else. And this holy apostolic see does not desire to waste time with useless explanations when the fact remains that this horrible sect is using, using the name of Catholic and it is not Catholic at all. So stay away from these people completely. You will, you will only, if, if you attempt to, uh, even if you name them as Catholic, that is in itself is heresy because that's a non-Catholic religion. Sacrament of Baptism. As a spirit's heretics, we have addressed this uh, in our publication from January 31st, uh, what it means to be baptized outside the true Roman Catholic Church. So then, uh, if it is done correctly, the sacrament of baptism, it is valid, but still outside the Catholic Church and does no divine grace of baptism given by God to heretics. The rest is very thoroughly taught by the Holy Apostolic Seer of Rome by his own Pope Eccles. First, and the recent video publication and so forth. SSPX resistance heretics, same as above, same as SSPX, SSPV, uh, the Society of the Fifth heretics, same as above, the Seraphicantus heretics, same as above, all other heretics, same as above, all is outside the Catholic Church and does no divine grace of baptism. The apostate pro communist novels are the sect of Satan. Run away from these servants of the devil as far as possible. That's all we can say. If anyone is granted by God uh, the grace of, uh, of uh, conversion and comes from the novels of the sect, they have to know that they have to abjure the heresies as any other heretics would and will be required. And moreover, they will be uh, conditionally baptized because we cannot trust. Uh, we cannot trust their their baptism. There's just no way to approve it to 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 have the certitude that they've done correctly, because there are very way too many problems in all this. Every case will be investigated thoroughly and, and individually, so we don't need to address this. Sacrament of confirmation, um, as a spx heretics now invalid episcopate. Their 1988 anadomini episcopal consecration and conscripts on by the already then ipso facto excommunicated heretic. Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre is declared null and utterly invalid because the heretical 1962 quote, right, unquote, of Ancho Roncalli was used. No holy oil stand and no valid priesthood either. And that's required the oil of the catechumens for this sacrament. And moreover, uh, it belongs to the bishop to administer it. There's a little bit of provision there, but uh, canonical provision on, on this, so we don't need to enlarge on that too much. We're addressing the what the what these heretics that they don't have they don't have the holy oils, which is essential for that to be used on the uh, on those being confirmed, and uh, so they don't have that, and they don't have valid episcopate as it is, so and priesthood, so there's no it's just it's it's a it's a deception of the devil. Then we go to the rest of them, as it is, as a SPX, resistance, society and passive faith, set of accountants, heretics, no true holy oils, oil of the catechumen. And thus the sacrament of confirmation is declared null and utterly invalid. And then we have this, the apostate pro communist novels are the sect of the devil, run away from these servants of Satan as far as possible. These are laymen impostors. Most of them have never been Catholic. They serve the devil. There is a serious and real danger that these are communist agents collecting personal data on all who come to this sect, which applies also to all other such like heretics. And that's very dangerous because they're trying to destroy the church. That's the conclusion right here. Um, what to do next? First and foremost, Learn the Catholic faith, Catechism of the Council of Trent, Father Donovan's translation in English. Uh, learn it, read it, it's about 400 pages, plus minus. And uh, we have produced only 15 videos on the first part because we don't have the capacity to produce the whole thing at this point because we are overwhelmed with work as it is. So it's impossible for us to do more production as, as it is at the moment. Uh, but it's on the first uh, uh, section of that of that catechism, which is very valuable as it is and is available on the internet, with the exception of uh, that 
copies um, contains a bit of uh, 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 the three four pages that are misplaced you know, but that's in in the end and so we have those uh, we have corrected it in our own uh, archive so uh, but um, that's very old translation from 1829 and but it's very valuable because it's very thorough and very very uh, essential obviously to study the page so that's what we require to, for people to read uh, and we don't know of uh, different languages what their what the level of uh, proportion is and what uh, what the proper doc documentation is or the catechism and so forth so we can't really that's the difficulty of restoring the church as it is then next point contact this holy apostolic see for the following guidance and admission into the catholic church essential examination of the catholic faith learned and professed this is required no exceptions abjuration of heresy must be done without it there is no admission into the catholic church there's a ceremony it's a ceremony that needs to be gone through it's pres pres prescribed by the church as part of the ritual romanum there's it's the, the applicant has to read it and promise and sign it. It has to be signed. None of these heretics do it. That's the, another another thing that when people are received from heresy, or from the novice of sect, they are received the, like the SSPX. They the heretics they just receive them because they say they are Catholic, and that's not true. They they are not they are not Catholic. The sect is not Catholic, so that's not that there has to be abjuration of heresy done. And that's required. And it's part of the canon law as it is. So then, conditional baptism, if coming from an observed sect, otherwise very thorough inquiry into the validity of baptism of the applicants. And then what is required, again, stay away from all heretics, including family members, as the devil will use them to derail and ruin your sincere effort to become truly Catholic. It is very important to observe this. And we have the continuation of these points. Be available for an internet video audience with this Holy Apostolic See in order to more carefully examine your particular situation, belief, history, and so on. We will not inquire into any personal data or anything, just uh, what to, to, to learn really what, uh, what you were brought up in so that we can the more assess how to proceed and it's for that purpose so there's nothing very thorough done it's just that it's necessary so they have an idea how to properly proceed how to guide you to become Shui Catholic this is very useful and necessary at the same time to determine the proper course of action and to inform the applicant of the necessary steps in greater detail for the safety of their souls and to give the proper guidance how to proceed and become Shui Catholic important note the applicants cannot have any bodily tattoos and piercing or be of the sodomite perversion and any such like deviances and free from all my, they must be free from all mind altering and addict, addictive narcotic substances whatsoever otherwise they will not even consider your, your application and, and, and all this so do not even bother to you have to be free of from all this and uh, it's it's sometimes we understand the difficulty but if it comes from God you will have you will truly love God you will not have problem going through it we had a situation before and so and there's no such thing as admission into the church with all this and not to have bodily piercing and tattoos that's violates the divine law so that's that's, that's that person is automatically hurt we will, we will not tolerate somebody in the church nor admit somebody into the church. Warning to the enemies of the church, communists, etc. Your hate for God and his true Catholic Church will be repaid by him in full, and you will be detected as such if you attempt to apply for admission. Your infiltration and subversion of strategies are known to this Holy See, and you will be detected by the grace of God and with his help. So do not even attempt anything like this. Final apostolic blessing. The, uh, the true and rightful sovereign pontiff, His Holiness Pope Jacobus I. 
and pauses apostolic blessing on all those souls that in humble and sincere heart and soul strive to become truly Catholic, them obviously already guided by the divine grace to recognize this holy apostolic see as the true and genuine divine institution of the Roman Catholic Church, so that their conversion is granted by God and helped by Christ our Lord to be truly a successful one, so that such happy souls may partake of the divine goodness and mercy of God and become valid members of his Catholic Church, outside of which there is absolutely no salvation. Given from our present exile away from the Vatican, where we rightfully belong, on the feast of St. Thomas Aquinas, confessor and doctor of the Church, 7th Mar March 7, 2024, Anno Domini, the third year of our uh, visible pontificate. So, to conclude this uh, publication today, we have demonstrated very thoroughly as, as it is what, what is required to, 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 to be like in order to be Catholic, to be admitted into the Church. It's, it is long, but we have to uh, go through it and so forth. Those who will recognize that we, this is truly the Catholic Church and that we teach the truth, that's the great help and mercy of God, because then they will know that God is helping them to convert. And this is His gift, divine gift of conversion that leads you to recognizing that this is truly the Holy Apostolic See of Rome and that we are truly the Sovereign Pontiff, the rightful Pope, the rightful Sovereign Pontiff, and that we have the authority and possessor, rightful possessor of the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And those who don't understand it, do not wish to understand it, then they are uh, on their own. They, they cannot be helped and they will have to suffer the consequences. And that should suffice today. This dogma divinely revealed outside the true Roman Catholic Church, which is this holy apostolic see, without the practicing of Catholic faith, which is nothing else but Catholic tradition, there's absolutely no salvation. All heretics, infidels, apostates, or enemies of the church, like the communists, socialists, atheists, and so forth, they all burn in hell. They'll burn in hell if they die in such a state of their soul. And God will punish this world at the end, and only those who are actually Catholic will be helped to, to be protected.